are not done yet. There are more cities on our list. Governor Greg Abbott with a warning after busing migrants from Texas to Chicago. He says more cities could be next. This new the strong words bouncing back at him from the mayor of Chicago. We are on standby for a verdict any minute now in the public corruption trial of Michelle Barrientes Vela. How lawyers wrapped up their argument of her guilt or innocence. Live from KSA 12. The news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police say that two men who were hoping to get their hands on some expensive lumber from a construction site instead ended up in handcuffs. They're accused of stealing and officers believe it is not the first time they've done it. Katrina Weber shows us how proactive policing led to these arrests. It's not quite time to punch the clock in this construction zone, but San Antonio police already are at work just outside the fence. They say one officer in particular arrived before daybreak on Carnahan Street just off Broadway to watch the site for wood thieves who struck here yesterday. He was acting on a hunch they'd come back. And just before 7 this morning, police say he caught two men red-handed stealing lumber and placed them into handcuffs. Construction workers told me off camera that they're glad. They say all that wood cost a lot of paper. Lumber prices are especially high now. Police say, as it turns out, the suspects were into stealing more than just lumber. They say that truck that they arrived in also was stolen. Officers notified the owners both of the construction site and the pickup, letting them know their proactive policing had paid off. The suspects could have to pay in the form of jail time. Police believe they have done this before, that they probably are the same people who targeted the site yesterday. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now, you're looking live inside the 226th District Court. Closing arguments underway in the public corruption case of ex-constable Michelle Barrientes Vela. The defense rested that case this morning after the prosecution presented seven days worth of evidence. Barrientes Vela faces two felony charges of tampering with evidence. Investigators say the former constable altered security logs for Rodriguez Park in the summer of 2019 and then turned over false records to law enforcement. Her defense attorney, seen here, argued that the records were not false. She was simply enforcing the law at the park. Prosecutor Oscar Salinas told the jury today to ignore the noise surrounding the high-profile case. And defense attorney Nico LaHood calling the state's presentation of evidence against Parientes Velas, quote, a bumpy waltz. The jury expected to begin deliberations any minute now. Now to a case that investigates update. Felony cases against five defendants in Guadalupe County have been dismissed after the Shirts Police Department destroyed evidence without proper review. The dismissals by the Guadalupe County attorney, the latest fallout from over a decade's worth of evidence in the department's property room being removed or destroyed. Shirts officials conceded last week that more than 1,000 cases were impacted by the improper purge. You can read more about the dismissals on our website, ksat.com. Looking outside with live cam, the sun coming out earlier this morning, though, Justin, there were a lot of clouds, and I think that made the dove hunters who were out on opening day pretty happy. Oh, I'm sure it did. Hey, you know, it, it felt pretty good out there this morning. We did have a lot of clouds. Now starting to see some blue skies. Temperatures are going to start to jump up. Uh, they're already there in the mid-80s. We'll be probably in the 90s this afternoon. We want to start, though, with the radar. We do have one shower. There are at least a couple of showers, I should say. Uh, Northern Medina County working in the Bandera County. Uh, there was some lightning with this earlier it has since uh, dissipated, but that really is all we've got. And I don't anticipate a ton today. There will be some isolated showers and storms, but not widespread coverage here around the area. And if you're heading out to some of the football games tonight, weather will be warm for the start of the game. 91 degrees of kickoff. Sunset is around 756, halftime 85. With south East Chile winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Rain chances are low today and tomorrow, but they pick up over the weekend. We've got a pretty good shot at some downpours both Saturday and Sunday. We break down that forecast for you. Plus, we look at the drop monitor, too. The latest there coming up in just a bit. Guys. Thank you, Justin. A bus chartered by the state of Texas to relocate undocumented migrants arrived in Chicago last night. It is the third major U.S. city where Texas is now transporting migrants. And Governor Greg Abbott says more could be coming to other cities. Meanwhile, Chicago's mayor disagrees with Abbott's move. Well, I got news for New York. I got news for Washington, D.C., as well as the rest of the country. We are not 
done yet. Yeah. There are more cities on our list. Shame on Governor Abbott. What he is doing is immoral, unpatriotic, and it defies the values of who we are as Americans. We can disagree on policy and politics, but you don't treat people this way. The bus arrived late last night in Chicago. Texas previously sent more than 8,000 migrants to New York and Washington, D.C. The Texas Division of Emergency Management released figures this week showing that as of August 9th, the state has spent more than $12 million on its busing program. Governor Abbott says the goal is to bring attention to the influx of people arriving from the southern border. And Governor Abbott is facing, he has also accepted invitations for four other town-style debates hosting by news organizations. Abbott's campaign has indicated that September 30th debate is the only one he is willing to do before the November election. Now to the latest in court developments following the FBI's raid on former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Today, a federal judge will consider whether to grant Trump's request for a special master to oversee a separate review of the documents that were seized from his estate. That special master would help determine if there are any executive or attorney-client privilege concerns. Trump's lawyers say that a review would allow for highly personal information, such as diaries or journals, to be separated out from the investigation and returned to Trump. The Justice Department says an appointment is unwarranted because investigators have already completed their review and have identified the materials that potentially contain attorney-client privileged information. Millions of Americans are set to travel this Labor Day weekend, and if you plan on flying, a pilot picket line might greet you at the airport. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has the details. Millions of holiday travelers being met with picketing pilots today at major airports across the country, protesting massive flight delays and cancellations that have made travel this year a nightmare, not only for passengers. The, the cancellations are frustrating for the pilots as well. We, we sympathize with our passengers because it affects our lives as well. Pilots from Delta, United, American, JetBlue and Spirit picketing at 12 major airports, including Chicago's O'Hare and New York's JFK, demanding management fix operational problems. Delta releasing a statement saying in part, our goal remains to continue providing Delta pilots with an industry-leading overall contract with the best compensation based on pay, retirement, work rules, and profit sharing. A new report from the Department of Transportation finds passenger complaints were up 35 percent in June compared to the prior month. The airlines blaming staffing shortages, a resurgence in travel demand, and severe weather for the travel chaos. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg sending a letter last month to the CEOs of major airlines demanding they do better. Today, the DOT launching a new website that lists what airlines owe travelers for various flight disruptions, including things like meal vouchers and refunds. Airlines insist the picketing pilots are off-duty and so won't affect operations. But if you're one of the 13 million people expected to travel this Labor Day weekend, experts advise pack a big bag of patience because airlines and airports are still understaffed. Despite that new DOT website for passengers, 38 attorneys general sent a letter to lawmakers this week criticizing the DOT's response to consumer complaints, asking them to shift authority to the states and other agencies like the Department of Justice. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. There's a new student, so to speak, at Judson ISD, helping students ease their stress. It's kind of fuzzy. She's so cute and cuddly. I feel like she makes everybody stay better. This puppy's already making friends at several campuses, and soon her position will be a bit more official. You already got a little sneak peek. Justin I, Judson ISD students getting a new furry friend, bringing some smiles and comfort to those who are stressed out by the new school year. The district's new comfort dog is helping students express themselves at a justice school. Tiffany Huertas has a look at how Jojo is there when students are having a tough day. She's so cute and cuddly. I feel like she makes everybody stay better. Fifth grade student Bella de la Torres says when she is having a difficult day, she can count on Jojo to make it better. Sometimes I get a little bit like 
antsy because I don't want to get a bad grade, but she makes me happy. Jojo is the newest member of the Judson ISD family. The kids love her, the staff love her. The almost two-year-old miniature golden doodle visits students at different campuses with school counselor Tiffany Gutierrez. Sometimes they have big emotions, especially with the little ones, and they're learning those self-management skills, those self-regulation skills. Um, and a dog can be really great at helping them manage those. Gutierrez says Jojo is an extension of what a counselor can provide, a safe space to be yourself. Jojo knows basic commands, sit, but she's on her way to become a certified therapy dog. It's hard not to fall in love with Jojo. She's so cute and she makes me happy. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. How could that not make you happy? I don't know. You know, I'm happy just looking at her. I'm not even holding her. All those kids walking down the hall, that dog running around. How much fun is that going to be in school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, got some rain at the house yesterday. I didn't Whoa, know what it was. Really? I had to like go out and stand in it, make sure it was wet. Yeah, we got more on the way, too. Yeah. I think we got some more good opportunities coming up this weekend. Some uh, showers and downpours back in the forecast. The aquifer hasn't responded much to the recent rains. It's holding steady at 634.9. But again, we'll have some more chances, and hopefully the aquifer gets a boost. Molds are high at 1,940. Fall Elm is moderate. A look at that weekend forecast. We time out the rain chances for you. Coming up. He's been telling us all along when this rain started coming, look for these spotty showers and there's going to be some heavy rain at time. And he was, he was right. All right. Just need to move them a little bit to the west. See, that's the key. It, you got to be at the it. right spot. Yeah. Yeah, we're fine right where they were yesterday. All right. I'm talking about today. <laughs> some, some people okay. are happy and then it's some people, today. you know, that's, and that's the way it goes. But we do know there is a lot of moisture in the atmosphere all the way through. And we're, we're seeing that now, but even more so. Uh, next few days, we're going to see that. So, yes, any of these showers or storms, once they do develop, will put down some very good rainfall. We've known that's uh, that's led to some flooding in some cases over the last few days. I want to show you the radar right now. We've had one good downpour, but we're not going to look for a lot today just because there's not a lot, of, not a lot to, to trigger activity today. There's uh, no boundary or anything like that. Our low is moving away. So it's just going to be isolated air mass stuff today. And we see the one little shower there in Bandera County. Of course, that's an area that has been seeing quite a bit of, of rain. If you're watching earlier, we, we talked about the Medina River, how it's really started to flow again yesterday because of all that rain flowing into the rivers. And we're seeing some of our streams and creeks starting to flow again. So this is good. But uh, there is the uh, shower there around Medina and Tarpley. And all of that is moving north at this point, but that is all we have. Nothing here around San Antonio. I want to show you the drought monitor that came in this morning. This was last week. You see this area in maroon here. That's all exceptional droughts. We had a large portion of area within the exceptional droughts. So let's fast forward to this week and you can see the improvement. Uh, we eroded some of that exceptional drought, especially out west, because these are areas that got good rain. Now over San Antonio, we're still technically in the exceptional drought. Hopefully we can keep shaving away at this and uh, bring this down a little bit more, but this is the monthly rainfall totals. These are the monthly rainfall totals from August and they're pretty good. I mean, burning close to two inches. The airport picked up about two inches. Places like Pearsall picked up seven and a half last month. Brackenville, seven inches. So there were some spots that really made out well. And again, that's helping little by little with this drought situation. A little closer to home here, Chavano Park 2.4, downtown about 1.6, Boulevardi 1.6, Spring Branch 2.17. Uh, that was, again, last month. Those are the totals for August. Now, as we head into September, the pattern stays pretty active. 85 degrees at the airport, 85 cents and 82 Randolph. We've got a southeasterly breeze. Still quite a bit of cloud cover, but the sun is beginning to pop out. Here's the big picture, and we see uh, showers lining up from Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls, back in the West Texas. And that's kind of the corridor where rain is a good bet today. You go south of that, again, there's no real trigger here to get uh, good showers and storms going. And as we look a little bit closer, yeah, there are some pop-ups. And I think where you see some clearing, uh, you take these high clouds out of the equation, that's where you'll start to see some of these pop-ups, a few more of them into the afternoon. And uh, temperature wise, we're sitting in the 80s right now, mid 80s here in town, 85 at the airport, 87 Holotus, 80 Canyon Lake, 86 right now in New Braunfels. And there is a little bit of a heat index today too with the 
high humidity levels. Forecast calls for a 20% chance of rain this afternoon. One or two isolated showers and storms. Uh, now, as we get into tonight, uh, there's a little better chance of rain. This computer model continues to want to bring showers and storms into play, say 10 p.m. to midnight. We'll see if that does happen. There could be some heavy rain involved in that. And then a 20% chance of rain as we get into tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon, kind of the same story. But by Saturday, energy starts to come in from the north and our rain chances really do begin to increase. 30% chance overnight early on Saturday, but by the time we get in Saturday afternoon, we're talking 60% chance for rain both Saturday and Sunday and a pretty good chance on Labor Day too. It will not be a complete washout over the weekend, they'll tell you that. Uh, but there is a, a chance for rain. Uh, very quickly, if you're heading down to the coast, good chances of rain down there as well. Uh, showers and storms likely uh, over the weekend, unfortunately, if uh, that is part of your plans. 94 today, tomorrow, 80s over the weekend, and next week still some rain chances with warm temperatures, guys. Thank you, Justin. The way the receiver core is working out for the Cowboys, they need Michael Gallup, but will they get him? Yeah, they do, and the fact is he's not starting off on the physically unable to perform list, so that means the Cowboys feel he will start Sometime within one of the first four games coming up, Michael Gallup is hitting all the marks on his checklist and a rookie running back, Damian Pierce, out in Houston is in line to start week one. Nick Casario tells us why coming up. When he had a chance, you know, he was productive, you know, with his touches. So um, I think he has, you know, good lower body strength, good body balance, uh, pretty instinctive, has good vision. Houston Texans general manager Nick Casario is talking about rookie running back Damian Pierce, the talk of Texans training camp in big board sports. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. There are now two former San Antonio high school football players on the Dallas Cowboys roster and offensive lineman Terrence Steele and wide receiver Dennis Houston. Houston from Warren High School was a standout at training camp as an undrafted free agent and not just for his route running but also for being physical. It impressed star quarterback Dak Prescott. And another surprise, uh, Cowboys did not place Michael Gallup on the pup list, meaning they believe he'll be able to return before the fourth game of the season. He's getting close. Uh, you know, he's he's hit every target. You know, just you know, his re, his rehab's going very smooth. So we're just uh, just staying on the plan. And um, but yeah, he's he's still working with with Britt in the rehab group. Cowboys will kick off their season one week from this Sunday night at 715 against Tampa Bay. So let's check out the Dallas Cowboys practice squad. Some notables. You have two quarterbacks and Will Greyer and Cooper Rush, kicker Brett Maher, linebacker Malik Jefferson, guard Isaiah Alarcon, and wide receiver Brandon Smith. Houston Texans rookie running back Damian Pierce made such a good impression during the training camp. The Texans wave veteran back Marlon Mack and then later added him to the practice squad. Pierce, a fourth round draft pick from Florida, will likely start week one at home against the Colts. The Texans love the 22 year old rookie. Yeah, I think he's been consistent, you know, like a lot of players. I'd say the rookie class in general, for the most part, has been a pretty consistent group. Um, I think Damian's been consistent since he got here. Um, he's got a good attitude. Um, he's got a good work ethic. Football is important to him. Um, and I think when you go back and look at, you know, whether it was Florida, whether it was the Senior Bowl, whether it was the Combine, you know, our different interactions with him, it's been pretty consistent. Here's a check of the Houston Texans practice squad. Some notables, quarterback Jeff Driscoll. There's running back Marlon Mack, tight end Jordan Atkins, wide receiver Johnny Johnson III, and linebacker Kevin Pierre-Lewis. After being cut by the Minnesota Vikings, Kellen Mon has been claimed off waivers by the Cleveland Browns. The Browns wire on USA Today is puzzled by this move, saying that Mon struggled in the preseason with the Vikings in a similar offensive system used by the Browns. And NFL insider Jordan Schultz is reporting that the Eagles also also put in a waiver claim on Mond, but Cleveland got him because they had the higher claim. KSAT 12 Sports was in Carrizo Springs for the Uvalde Coyotes season opener last Friday in which they won 21-13. Now KSAT will stream live on all of our platforms, the Uvalde home opener at the Honey Bowl this Friday night starting at 6.30 p.m. with the pregame show. And we'll carry the entire game, including halftime as they take on Eagle Pass win. Yourself, Greg, and Andrew Seeley going to be calling the game? Yep. All three of you going to be awesome. there doing and it? Andrew will be on the sideline. I believe R.J. Marquez is going to be there getting reaction from the community. So 
It's awesome. Be pretty cool. Yeah, great night. Glad we're doing that. Yep. Thanks, Larry. Hunger Action Month is this 30-day window that just says, hey, doesn't matter what you do, do something. New today at 5, September, marking Hunger Action Month. While the San Antonio Food Bank works toward ending hunger 365 days a year, they are hoping to inspire the community to do the same. Max Massey with ways you can help today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. President Biden set to give a speech on what he is calling the continued battle for the soul of the nation. It's going to happen during a primetime address in Pennsylvania tonight. White House officials say Biden will touch on what's at stake in our democracy as well as the progress his administration thinks it has made in protecting the nation's core values. Biden is going to give these remarks in front of Independence Hall. He's going to make the case that America's democracy is still under attack. The speech comes a week after the president returned to the campaign trail and criticized Republicans who have questioned the 2020 election results. ABC has no plans to carry that speech. Despite recession fears and the Federal Reserve's attempts to slow jobs down, employers don't appear to be handing out pink slips. The jobs report out today shows jobless claims have fallen to the lowest level in two months. According to the Labor Department, in the week ending August 27th, 232,000 Americans filed for unemployment benefits for the very first time. That's a drop of 5,000 from the previous week and the lowest level since the last week of June. This drop is the first time in first time claims also beats the expectations of economists. They were predicting that claims would rise. COVID-19 appears to be having an effect on the U.S. educational system. Math and reading scores for nine-year-olds in the U.S. fell drastically since 2020. That's according to the National Center for Education Statistics. This is the first national report to compare student achievement from before to after the start of the pandemic. The organization says overall, math scores dropped seven points, while reading scores are down by five points. This marks the largest decline in reading since 1990 and the first time math scores have ever declined. It is the fourth day without clean water for residents of Jackson, Mississippi. People lined up for hours yesterday to get bottled water. The city's mayor is optimistic water can be restored this week, but he admits, quote, there's a huge mountain to climb. Amari Walker has more on the frustration from residents, especially from parents. It's horrible and I would like for it to be fixed. Please fix our water. Uncertainty running high in Jackson, Mississippi, as the city enters a fourth day without reliable water service. I do want to be clear and set expectations that there will be future interruptions. They are not avoidable at this point. On Wednesday, a new emergency rental pump was installed at Jackson's water facility. However, challenges quickly emerged with the water chemistry. Despite these challenges, Mayor Shokwe Antar Lamamba hopes water service will be restored by the end of the week. But some other local officials are skeptical. They had to stop services today because they had a 10 million gallon tank that had to be dispersed and, and pumped out and then refilled so they could bring that water, the new water, up to quality standards to sh send out into the system. As to when we'll be able to have it back the way it should be, uh, I'm hoping we'll have that in a week or two weeks. As a result of the issues at the city's water facility, some residents are left with no water, others left with low water pressure or even brown water. It's devastating as a father because, you know, we're the providers uh, of the fam for the family. And right now, we are just crippled. Mississippi has deployed the National Guard, and President Joe Biden approved an emergency declaration Tuesday. Schools and businesses have been forced to close, and there isn't enough water to fight fires in the state's capital. Parents are worried about their children's health during this crisis. Fever, headaches, they got chills, all of that. Um, I traced everything back to it was the water. Residents are left waiting on hours long lines for water. I've been in line maybe almost an hour. It's been rough. Somebody could do ready. something. The city's water problems have been ongoing for years and there's been a boil water advisory in effect since July. This has been an issue for me since I came down here to Tougaloo College in 1991. I was always told not to drink that water. 
Jackson's mayor says he's hopeful for long-term change after having phone calls with President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Both assured me that the eyes of Washington are watching the city of Jackson and they assured me that their support was going to be uh, demonstrated through long-range and long-term efforts through the EPA. That was CNN's Amara Walker reporting. The Environmental Protection Agency recently announced its federal water and sewer infrastructure funds to the state. Look at outside with live cam, lots of clouds, some rain here and there. But you know, I gotta say, this has been a really pleasant August. End yeah. of August into September. I'm, I've never felt it this nice <laughs> at this well, time of the year. It, it was like Mother Nature just kind of flipped the switch, right? We had all this heat and then by the time we got into mid-August, everything changed a little bit. We got into this active pattern and we have not gotten out of it. So there's still more chances for rain ahead of us. Not so much today. Today's actually going to be a pretty quiet day, I think. Uh, just some isolated showers and storms. But as we look at the weather headlines, yeah, isolated, partly cloudy skies today. But we could be looking at a wet weekend. It's not going to be rainy all weekend long, but we'll have scattered showers and storms and possibly some heavy downpours and spots. We'll have to watch for some flooding. Flooding won't be widespread, but there will be some spots that uh, could see a little bit of street flooding, considering we've had uh, quite a bit of rain lately. Something we'll be watching. 85 degrees at the airport right now. Dew point is at 71, so the feels like number 90. Southeasterly winds at about 7 miles per hour. Here's the satellite radar, and you can see some of these showers popping up. Uh, we've got quite a bit of cloud cover at the moment. I think uh, these clouds scatter out a little bit more. We'll be looking at partly cloudy conditions this afternoon. So here's a case that 12 hour forecast, just a 20% chance of rain. Temperatures eventually make their way into the 90s today. And of course, it will feel warmer than that. 91 by 7 p.m. And look for temperatures in the 80s this evening. We bump up rain chances a little bit as we go into tonight with some showers and storms potentially redeveloping. We'll talk more about that and then also how quickly do our rain chances jump back up? We have more on that, too, coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. A new and coming up in sports, Larry Mears, the O'Connor Panther volleyball team having a lot of success, and they're praising one person, their coach. Isn't it pretty? A rare stone comes with a price tag to match. How much you'll have to scrape together to buy it and where it's up for sale. Here's a little more proof that the price of almost everything is going up. Sam's Club is now raising its discount store membership price by five bucks. It's going to now run you $50. The first change to the fee at the Warehouse Club owned by Walmart in nine years. It goes into effect in October and represents an 11% increase. The cost of a premium membership plan is also going up in the first increase since the plan was introduced back in 1999. It's going from $100 to $110. But it's not all bad news. Sam's Club said it's going to offer $5 in rewards to shoppers with a basic membership and then $10 to premium customers as a perk for renewing under the new pricing system. But that discount won't help you much if you want this. It's a unique gem hitting the auction block at Sotheby's. It's the Williamson Pink Star Diamond, considered among the rarest of all gemstones. Officials describe the diamond as fancy, vivid pink, weighing in at just over 11 carats. It's bigger than most diamonds of that color. It is expected to bring in at least $21 million. I'll take one. Just one. Anchor TV news show comes with all kinds of pitfalls and surprises. A high profile anchor in Canada knows that all too well now after a fly challenged her composure. I hope this <laughs> never happens to me. She, she proved that swallowing a fly live on the air does not have to be a buzzkill. Oh. CNN's GD Mose with an unexpected made for TV moment. This Canadian news anchor and reporter has had experience dealing with human pests. Please, you're not wearing a mask. You need to get away from me. You're not wearing a mask. But that didn't prepare her, though a mask could have helped when a pesky fly dive-bombed her mouth. A national emergency has been invoked has been invoked, but the weather in Pakistan, the extreme weather, is alarming. Nitu Garcha reports. 
Global Nationals Farah Nasser made it through the intro. The stealthy fly was invisible. All viewers saw was the deep gulp. I could feel it fluttering in the back of my throat as I finished that uh, introduction. Sorry, I know this is so gross. Insects are feasting on prominent Canadians. Ontario Premier Doug Ford got buzzed just weeks ago. It's coming from the health sector. <laughs> Holy Christ, I just swallowed a bee. Now viewers are comparing and contrasting the two. Both reach for water to no avail. It wasn't going down, it was just stuck. Holy Christ, he's, he's wedged in my throat. Nasser was applauded for soldiering on. A national emergency has been invoked. Has been invoked. One Twitter user asked, who looked better, Farah or Ford? The parody account, Doug Ford's B, dinged his language. Unlike Ford, you definitely kept your composure. But maybe a bee with the threat of a sting is tougher to swallow than a fly. Though a fly was enough to derail this sportscaster. Just closing it out. Excuse me. Nasser didn't have to be excused. Did you ever see the fly again? No, I haven't. I believe the fly is still inside me. But who's better at winging it? A national emergency has been invoked. <laughs> Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. Oh Holy God. Christ, I knew that little bugger. Oh. <laughs> Those little buggers, you know, some people consider that a delicacy. So. I'm, I'm going with the news anchor. I think she was she amazing. held her composure very well. Oh. It's incredible. You just kept going. I, knock wood, that never happens to us. Ooh. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> anyway, uh, outside, we've got partly cloudy skies. 88 degrees so far today. That's the high temperature, 76 to the low. We're going to be pretty close to the average this afternoon. So warm temperatures, yes. We're going to drop back below average this weekend. Another look at that seven-day forecast is coming up. Love the uh, rain, not so much the humidity, but we take the good with the bad. Yes, and it's yeah. so nice to see that green grass sprouting out of dirt that <laughs> we've just been parched all summer long. You're right. It, all it took was one good rainfall, yeah. and then the grass went, went, went crazy. I, it really is kind of interesting. We were in a very desert-like situation, and then we just switched over to more of a, a tropical air mass, just like that. It really was like flipping a switch, and that's where we are. With this tropical air mass, though, we tend to get these... Thunderstorms that build up during the afternoon. We're going to see some more of that today. First, though, we start with September. We look at the climatology here. We average 94 on September 1st. So today, the average high is 94. The average low is 73. But by the time we get to the end of the month, look at the average high, 87. The average low is 66. We start getting fronts in September. It cools down our average temperatures. Fall officially begins September 22nd. So things are looking up. Uh, we uh, we are excited as we get into fall, considering what the summer was like, right? Uh, the current setup, we've got a ridge pipe pressure over to our east. Still an area of low pressure out over Mexico, and that's developing heavy rain still across parts of far west Texas, places that need the rain just like us. And then some of that moisture is getting funneled up towards Oklahoma City. But a lot of this action is well north of us, and I think it probably stays that way today. Heavy rain is going to be relegated to the Big Bend region where flood watches are still in effect. And then a heat high, which we came to know so well over the summer has moved west. It's over parts of California and Nevada, and that's where the big time heat is. Look at the high temperatures today. 108 in Las Vegas, 111 Death Valley, 105 Phoenix, 103 Sacramento. So those are places that are going to be looking at record highs today. It will be baking out west. Thankfully, we don't have high temperatures like that. We'll be in the 90s today. Yes, it will be hot, but nothing that hot. As we go outside for you, 85 degrees at the airport, mostly cloudy skies. Two point is at 71. Feels like 90. But the southeasterly breeze, uh, again, pretty light. 90 in Gonzales, 86 in New Braunfels, 87 in Catula, 86 in Carrizo Springs. And around Bear County, it's mid-80s for the most part. 88 in Castroville, so a little bit warmer there. And then the feels like numbers, well, they're in the mid-90s in some cases. Feels like 95 in Pleasanton, feels like 93 in New Braunfels. The heat index may get as high as the upper 90s this afternoon. So, yeah, it's still feeling a little bit like summer out there. Uh, it would be nice if we could get a cooling shower, but I don't think the chances are all that high today, about a 20% chance here in town. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to watch tonight. This model has been very consistent on developing a little cluster of storms around San Antonio overnight. We'll see. It takes some outflow batteries to get that to happen, but we'll bring chances up to 30% overnight. 
and then during the day on Friday, basically just a 20% chance of rain as we head into the afternoon with more of these pop up showers and storms. As we get into Friday night and then more so into Saturday, you're going to see more on the radar as we get some energy coming in from the north, combining with some of that tropical moisture that we already have in place and rain chances do pop up over the weekend. For today, 20% chance at 3 o'clock, 93, 91 by 7 p.m., 20% chance of rain. And we do have some Thursday night football games going on tonight. It'll be pretty warm for those, and there is a chance for a shower or two. And then, as I mentioned, we bring the rain chances up a little bit overnight. Meantime, in the tropics, several areas to watch here. And we do actually have a tropical storm, by the way. That would be Danielle. That's newly formed earlier this morning. But this is moving away. It's not going to be a problem for any landmass. This one has a pretty high probability of developing 80%, and there's another one just off the coast of Africa, about a 30% chance of development. This one, though, uh, likely is going to move off to the north in the Atlantic and not uh, be a factor either. Uh, looks like it'll stay out over open water. So the forecast, 94 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain, 60% chance Saturday, Sunday. We could see some pockets of heavy rain. I don't want you to think it's going to be raining all weekend because it won't be, but uh, there will be some times where there could be some heavy rain on the radar. So just uh, be on the lookout for that. And then 40% chance of rain on Monday with a high of 88. Uh, even rain chances going into the middle part of next week as well, guys. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Last week it was high school football crash in the dome. <laughs> this Saturday it's college football crash in the dome. Yeah, UTSA getting ready to host number 24, University of Houston Cougars. So coming up, UTSA was asked is how tough is this Cougar squad? And in tennis, Serena Williams still has some magic left. Coming up. Are you surprising yourself with your level? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm just Serena, you know, so I'm a pretty good player. <laughs> She's just Serena, and she still has some gas left in the tank at the U.S. Open and Big Board Sports. The UTSA Roadrunners have announced that seats in the upper level of the Alamo Dome for this Saturday season opener against number 24 Houston are on sale for just $10 plus online fees through this Friday. On Saturday, that price will jump up to 15 bucks. And prior to kickoff, the Roadrunners first ever Conference USA Championship banner will proudly be on display for the first time. Now, before starting their 2022 season, the Roadrunners were asked if this is the toughest team they're going to face. They jump out on paper, you know, statistically wise, they're nationally ranked. Um, it'll be a good defense. Um, everything our coaches have said is that this will be one of the best defenses we play. So um, we're going to go out there and compete and we'll see. They stack up to the teams that I've played in my short time here. Um, as long as I feel like I'm going to ride behind my guys, as long as we stick to the brand, the brand shows up physically tough, dominate, we'll, we'll be just fine. Kickoff in the Alamo Dome on Saturday is set for 2.30 p.m. Tuesday night, the O'Connor volleyball team solidified their position in District 29-6A with the sweep of the Harlan Hawks at Paul Taylor Fieldhouse. The Panthers were solid on both sides of the ball thanks to efficient hitting from senior Kelly Fording and defensive play from junior libero Carly Chavez. The Panthers led the first and third sets from start to finish but ran into some trouble early in the second set. Chavez credits head coach Yami Garcia for turning the tide. She pushed us and she told us like regain ourselves, like restart, and we did and pulled out with the win. We work hard, we watch film, we make sure we focus on what we need to focus on. I believe we did that this match and that's why we got with the win we got. The Panthers are now 25 and four overall, two and zero in district play, and will take on Taft Friday night at Northside Sports Gym at 5:30 p.m. In front of a capacity crowd inside Arthur Ashe Stadium at the U.S. Open, Serena Williams pulled some magic out of her racket bag last night to upseat, upset the two seed Annette Contevet in three sets, seven six, two six, and six two, to keep her retirement on standby. Serena is doing her best to enjoy the moment while focusing on the task at hand. Yeah, I've been doing a little bit of both. I think I've most mostly been kind of blocking everything out, but then at the same time, I've been embracing a little bit of it because I also want to enjoy the moment because, um, yeah, I think these, these moments are clearly fleeting. So um, for me, it was it's really about having a little embrace, but also understanding that I'm here to focus, you know, and do the best that I can this time. Plenty of star power on hand to watch Serena, including her sister Venus and her friend Tiger Woods. David? Yeah, 
the stands are full of all these celebrities now. They didn't watch tennis five years ago, but now they're all It's there. a must-see moment. It is. All right. Must-see moments. Yeah, SA mm -hmm. Live's a must-see. Fiona, what's going on? Hey, it is our home improvement show today, and helping us touch up our home with a lesson in painting is Ashley Johnson with Five Oaks Ace Hardware. And Ashley, if folks want to match a color in their home, you can do that, right? Yes, that is absolutely correct, Fiona. We can color match anything in your home, just like your favorite candle. I've even ma color matched a customer sweater before, so whatever your color matching needs are, come by Five Oaks Hardware. All right, we'll have more from Five Oaks Hardware in just a bit, but Jen is getting some closet organizing advice from the pros over at Inspired Closets. Yes, and who says the laundry room can't be a happy space, right? And we have Alyssa Jordan joining me at Inspired Closets. Let's show off a few of the uh, fun awesome. little angles here that we have. Okay. Ironing board, it's all hidden. We have a lazy Susan, flat wall inside Perfect. of the cabinet. All the things, right? Yes. Drying rack. Yes, so much more coming up here at Inspired Closets. Back to you, Fiona. All right, all that and more home improvement ideas when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. All right, temperatures are making their way up into the 90s today. 20% chance of rain. We'll watch the radar, just some isolated stuff the next couple days. But rain chances begin to increase Friday night into the weekend. 60% chance of rain Saturday and Sunday. Could see some pockets of heavy rain. And even Labor Day has some decent chances of rain. Keep that case that weather app handy and we'll keep you updated as we get closer to the weekend. Thank you, Justin, and thank you for watching the news at noon. I had no idea you could have so much fun hanging out in the laundry room. Sure. <laughs> I ought to go in there more often. I try to encourage my children there all the time. See? They probably enjoy Come it. On in. Fold some clothes. <laughs> yes, they live starts right now. Today on SA Live, it's our home improvement show and we share professional organizing tips for your closet and pantry. Plus, we get helpful hacks from Handyman Mike. And how to design and restoration shop. All right, hello and happy Thursday. It's the SA Live Home Improvement Show brought to you by Expo Home Improvement. I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Mike Osterhage is off today, but I've got Jen Tobias Dresky joining me from afar. Hey there, Jen. Hello, yes, I will fill you in on more where I'm located right now and we'll chat more about that a little later in the show. But the Home Improvement Show got us thinking about life hacks, right? Hacks that you use around the house, maybe some that you can't live without. Fiona, do you have any? I'll tell you, so you know with kids sometimes, or even you know with pets too, maybe they mark up your walls. So when I don't have you know one of those magic erasers you know laying around, I'll take a hair dryer to say the crayon on the wall, and then I'm able to kind of slowly wipe it off with a cloth. That can work in a pinch. What about you, Jen? Okay, I'm gonna take note of that. Yes, uh, the one I saw recently online was using shower hooks to hang your jeans in the closet. That just blew my mind, okay? Uh, also, if you have one of those cake stands that you can flip it over, it turns into a bowl. Okay, I that blew my mind. I saw that in the video right <laughs> there. By the way, right you there. can stay online forever. <laughs> yes, you, you can be stuck online watching those videos forever, but there's a ton of them, and that's what we wanna know from our viewers today. What is your favorite hack? Maybe share it with us, and we may share your answers a little later in the show. I just saw that last one, putting the garbage bags on like a paper towel dispenser. Yes and then it rips off real easy. Wow, yeah, no, you're right. You could watch these forever. So be sure to tag us at SILFKSAT on Facebook and Twitter, <laughs> and you may see your answer a little later in the show and give us some ideas. Thank you, Jen, see you in a bit. All right, our first guests today are helping us touch up our home with a lesson in painting 101. Joining us today is Elizabeth Ann Dunlop, Ashley Johnson, and John Dunlop from Five Oaks Ace Hardware. Hey there, guys. Hey. Thanks for being here on yeah. our fabulous home improvement show. Thank Elizabeth. you for having us. We're gonna start with you, okay? okay. Because 
this is all about color. So yes. how do you pick the right color for whatever room you're going to be working oh, with? Oh, it's so much fun. You know, the, the least expensive way to spruce up your home, inside or outside, is with a fresh coat of paint. So it's really important to figure out what kind of mood do you want your house or your room to be. Um, you can have a neutral mood um, with the earth tones, which are really in right now. Um, or you can have a, a cooler feel to your room, or you can have that big warm feel. Um, right now, the colors that are really popular, um, according to the paint gods, uh -huh. is uh, are grays, navies, and greens, all in like earth, earth tony like, colors. Yes, yes. yes, nice and cool. Okay, so those are the trendy colors. Mm -hmm. um, what about some design tips? Like, say you think, oh, this color is going to yeah. work great in this yes. room. Yes there are some ways to make sure yes. it is the right one. Yes. Line. Well, so I love helping our customers pick out colors. I think it's the most fun thing I can do in the whole store. So um, w if a client comes in and says, you know, I want a gray, I want a blue, I want a green, whatever. And so we go to that section, we'll look at the, the swatches um, and see which maybe calls to them first. Then I'll have them fold that swatch to just look at the one color. Um, there's lights that the paint companies use and you'll look at it under the light and then I say well go under the desk not the person but the right. paint and look at it under the desk while they're looking at it it's going to give you another feel for that color and then finally I always tell the customer to go outside and look at it in the bright sunshine then when they've found three colors they like they get a sample they paint it in different places in the in their room and you go and look at it for a couple of days because that sunshine or the lack of sunshine right. is going to change the feel of that paint. It totally depends. The color. Does your room have a lot of natural yes. light? Is it like a cane? Yes. All right. Now we're moving over to Ashley and you are going to talk about the different types of paint. We've got about a couple minutes left. Yes, yes. So um, next you kind of want to choose a finish. So you're going to have uh, from flattest to shiniest is going to be flat, eggshell, satin, and semi-gloss. Um, you'll choose a different finish depending on what room you're painting, such as semi-gloss for a bathroom, eggshell for the living room. Now we have a few different brands that you can choose from at Five Oaks Hardware. Um, we chose the best of the best. We have our Benjamin Moore as well as the award-winning Magnolia Home by Chip and Joanna Gaines. Um, we kind of have Benline, Regal Select, and Aura. And that's kind of what we're working with as well as the specialty paints, the Aura Bath and Spa and the Benjamin Moore Advance. And a primer or no primer? Primer is always recommended. It's going to really get you that full coverage as well as making your paint go as far as you want it to. Making your paint goes further means that you end up spending less on your project needs. And in case you missed it earlier, you can color match anything, right? Yes. If you miss it earlier, we can color match anything in your home. So if you think you painted it in Sherwin-Williams or maybe you just have your favorite sweater that you think would look great in your bathroom, we can color match anything. All right. Now let's get on over to John. It all starts with the prep, right? It does. The fun part is the prep. I hate the prep, but it's, it's necessary because the better you prep, the easier it is to paint. Painting is so easy. So the first thing you're going to do is check your, check your walls if you have any dings or holes or um, where you hung that stubborn uh, uh, painting. Get some spackle, get your putty knife, fill it in, and then uh, if it's really small, it should, should blend fine, but if not, you may need a little spray texture to cover that and spray it bigger than, than the circle so it blends in nicely. And then, we're, then you may want to put down your drop cloths so that you don't get that carpet or the, the furniture all, all colored. Then we're going to tape off the areas that you don't want painted. Like if you're doing the trim in a different color, you want to tape off that area. It makes it so much easier when you have that roller. And then you need to pick a roller. So we have different naps you put on the roller. Um, you also may put your roller on, a, on an extension so you can do it really nicely. paint roller you need. And from paint rollers to how to pick the correct brush, right? Right, exactly. Okay. This is the correct brush. And you make and you look at these brushes and we have good good, better, best. Um, you can, if, you were, if you're here holding this, you could feel this is really light and this is really heavy because it has better bristles on it and it holds more paint and has a more even, co even uh, coverage. All right, yeah. John. It's awesome. Thank you so much, John, Ashley, and Elizabeth. For more information on Five Oaks Ace Hardware, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we've provided a link or just scan that QR code on your screen.
All right, well, we all need a little help getting organized, right? And our Jen Tobias Strusky is out at Inspired Closets to get some closet organizing advice from the pros. Hey there, Jen. That's right, we're at Inspired Closets here in the Stone Oak area. And yes, you talk about the pros. I have one of the designers here, Alyssa Jordan, to help me out today. And again, another happy space, right? First yes. we were in the laundry room, now we're here. Exactly. Let's talk organizing tips. What do you have for us today? Well, I mean, first of all, <laughs> the main stressor, like the main cause of stress in people is really an unorganized space. And so what I love so much about these solutions is you can take all the little things that have no place and give them a space to live. Yes. Uh, so like for instance, this is an awesome area for like your bras, your panties, anything yes. like your intimate wear. Mm -hmm. um, then we have awesome soft clothes, oh. jewelry racks. Check out that soft clothes. Oh, what that does it. is that actually <laughs> prevents your systems from wearing down. Mm -hmm. Above you we have some. That just makes everything. Oh, this yes. is great. Yes. All the things. Now let's talk about the company, Inspired Closets. Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> so we are actually family owned and operated since 1997. But over the last few years, we partnered with a company called Inspired closets mm -hmm. and although they've been manufacturing for 35 years um, they actually are the only company that has built their brand from the ground up based on consumer research data oh that's very important because you yes. know what they like you know what they don't like so yes. what was interesting about that did you find out what they really don't like <laughs> yeah what they <laughs> didn't like is they felt like all their designs from these different companies were over designed and ah. super complex mm -hmm. and so what's different about us is we give you a high quality solution in a simple efficient design and we actually give three different designs a good better and best version mm -hmm. so you can get the exact design you want for the budget that oh, you need so important everybody yes. trying to stay on budget. Now, what did you find out that they really liked? Well, they really <laughs> like customer service. I mean, oh, everyone yes. does. Everyone likes to feel special. Everyone mm -hmm. likes to feel that the process is easy. So at Inspired Closets, we have a simple system from our uh, complimentary consultation. Is a easy flowing process that gives people a little bit of a surety in this process. And you mentioned even doing a 3D instead of just a sketch, right? Yes. You can actually do a 3D version of that right yeah. there at their, right? When you yeah. consult with them. Can you believe that people still <laughs> hand draw and sketch designs? Wow. Isn't that an ancient, right? <laughs> uh, but we do have an, a state of the art mm -hmm. software that we can create a design for you nice. right at our initial consultation. Oh, I love all of that. Yes. That's very important. Now we're back here talking about this amazing closet. Now you said this is one of the more common designs, right? Because you can you can double the size. Is that what you told me of your yes, closet? Tell yeah. me more. <laughs> well, typical closets, they just have one rod all the way across with one shelf on top of that. And so what we do is we try to erase the dead space yes. so that you can actually use the space that you have, especially with the housing market the way it is. Yes. Sometimes you need to create the space that you have with the square footage that you have. Yep. So from hanging rods to adjustable shelves, um, you can actually change those things as as a kid grows up. Yes. So they have um, adjustable rods as well. So when your clothes get bigger, those sections get bigger also. I love the adjustable part because it's so yes. important for growing families. And where can people find you if they'd like to come out here and check this out? Absolutely. We're on 1604 and 281 right near Krispy Kreme. Everyone knows where that <laughs> is. Yes. And you can um, find us online or on Instagram as well. Yes. Keep following them on social media. I love all the tips you've shared. And in the second half, we may go into the pantry here, and that is the most organized pantry I've ever seen, by the way. So, all right, thank you so much. Fiona, back to you. Thank you, Jen. All right, and of course, for more information on Inspired Closets, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just scan that QR code on your screen. All right, SA Live continues with handyman hacks from our very own Mike Osterhage. And revamping your furniture. One couple shows us how you can flip your furniture just like you flip houses.